to have with us this morning Evangelist Manuel Scott from Los Angeles. Okay. He's been coming with us for a long time. It's long enough for his told hair to be white. <laughs> we appreciate him. I've known him a long time. I knew his father and his brother, but he's been with us a long time. Now, there's two things about worship, three things uh, that I would like to mention. One is that when we come to church on Sunday morning, we, we do other things leading up to the worship. When it's worship time, we do not hold conversation, and we don't pick up no phone call that come on your phone. <laughs> Unless it's the hospital, they can wait. Exactly. And the reason we worship because we need power for next week. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And then two, we we worship because of what He's done for us. Yes. And a lot of people don't like to think about that, but I don't care what you have or where you've been or where you're going, if it had not been for God, yeah, 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 we yeah. would not have it. And so we owe him something, and this is the time we give it to him. Don't hold conversation with your neighbor. They are not talking about nothing. Right, right. This is the most important hour we're going to have is to worship God through the word given by Emmanuel Scott Jr. Let us receive him by the response of Amen. Emmanuel Scott. God has smiled on me. Everybody, come on. He set me free. Let's wave our hands and sing together, everyone. Well, God, God has smiled. Why don't you praise Him? He set me free. Let's give God a great big round of applause. Come on, you know God has smiled on you. Let's give God a hand of praise. We want every head bowed, every eye closed. If how grateful we are to God today because he has allowed us yet another chance to get it right with him. St. Paul, I've been sharing with congregations around the nation that individuals who are terribly ill in the hospital many times are said to be living on life support. Tubes and machines and various mechanisms are keeping them alive. But those of us who are conscientious Christians, we realize that we've been living on grace support. I said, we realize we've been living on grace support. It's been the sheer grace and mercy of God that have been keeping us alive. I stand to encourage someone here today by saying that regardless of whatever you may be going through, our God is still in the blessing business. 
my brother, my sister, young man, young woman, regardless of whatever you may be going through, our great God is still in the blessing business. In fact, he is a blessing specialist. I said he is a blessing specialist. He knows how to bless. He knows who to bless. And oh, yes, he knows when to bless. I know that in spite of myself, God has smiled on me. And I have a sneaky, sanctified suspicion that there is someone else here today who can also testify that through it all and in spite of it all, God has smiled on you. Heads about, eyes are closed, shall we pray? We do not know what will come, but we do know who will come. And if the last hour belongs to us, then we need not be afraid of the next minute. It is again our Father, my God, that we, your children of the dust and the clay, come before your divine presence in the strongest, most saving, and the sanctified name we know, and that is in the name of Jesus. We come in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Not in the name of Buddha, not in the name of Confucius, not in the name of Muhammad, not in the name of Allah, not in the name of Oprah, not in the name of Donald Trump, but we come in the mighty name of Jesus. A name that is above every name. Name it whichever knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We come in his name saying thank you Lord. Thank you for giving us such a beautiful day today. Thank you for last night's lying down. Thank you for allowing us to rise early this morning. And in a world that has gone absolutely insane, we say thank you for clothing us in our right minds. Oh God, we say thank you today. Thank you for the St. Paul Baptist Church, for each and every member that makes up this glorious congregation. And then Lord God, for the angel of this house who has stood some 50 years, right at 50 years, for the Reverend Dr. Ephraim Williams, God, we said thank you. Thank you for his pastor's heart. Thank you for his visionary disposition. Thank you for the fact that he loves your people and he loves your word. Continue to bless him and continue to strengthen his mind, body, soul, and spirit. Bless his entire family. For every preacher of the gospel who's here, we said thank you. For every officer, we said thank you. For every musician, for this fabulous choir, for our ushers, we said thank you. For every parent, every grandparent, for every visitor, for every young person, for every millennial, God, we say thank you. Now God, now God, today we need to hear a word from you. Open up our minds, prepare our spirits, convince us even now that something good is about to happen. We'll give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. We say thank you, Lord. 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 We're so mindful of those who are less fortunate than ourselves. And we ask even now that you forgive us for all of our sins. And then, Heavenly Father, it's your servants must earnest request that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. How we bless, praise, honor, and magnify the name of God today and how we truly thank him for his goodness, grace, mercy, and favor. How we indeed thank him for the fact that he loved us so much until he was willing to give unto us the very best that he had in his only begotten son, Jesus our Christ. That very same spirit, we pay all respect, love, and appreciation to this your most able, anointed, and outstanding pastor. Truly one of the finest preaching, teaching, counseling pastors you'll find anywhere in the solar system today. Amen. Your pastor and my pastor, the Reverend, Reverend Dr. Ephraim Williams. Amen. <laughs> to all of our wonderful preachers of the gospel who are with us sitting in the pulpit area as well in the congregation, certainly to the my, mighty fine officers of this great church, to our fabulous musicians, my God, and to this choir that is absolutely off the chain. Say amen, somebody. Amen. 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 To all of our dutiful ushers, parents, grandparents, our young people, millennials, visitors, and to you, my father's children, saints of God, soldiers of the cross, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if I covered everybody, shout amen. <laughs> I said shout amen. Amen. 
Now, if you're not too tired or ashamed, someone help me to say amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor now and shake your neighbor's hand real tight. Shake somebody's hand. Look them right in the eye and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. On, this first Sunday, on this first Sunday, I want you to know, you to know that in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I'm, too I'm too blessed to be stressed. Give God another hand of praise right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. At all times. His praise shall continually be in my mind. David said, Brother Clark, amen, Brother Ed, amen. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. He was simply saying that if you're breathing, then you ought to praise him, amen. Well, let me check the house. Anybody breathing in here today? Anybody glad that you're breathing in here today? Give the Lord another hand of praise. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Certainly, St. Paul, it's always an honor and a joy, a privilege, and a great pleasure to be in your midst. Of course, this is my church. Say amen. 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 Dr. Williams is my pastor. Say amen. amen. And I'm always happy to be back home with God be praised. Amen. Congratulations to Reverend Brother Polk, who's leading our preachers. Say amen. We will be meeting with all the preachers at 5 p.m. this evening. We want to see everybody. Say amen. amen. The pastor has asked me to teach the class once again. I want to thank uh, brother and sister um, uh, Lamont and Sandy uh, for a wonderful dinner that she treated Pastor and I to on yesterday. Uh, this year, Sister Sandy did the cooking. Say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Sandy, stand up, my dear. Praise be to God. Sandy, will you please stand up? <laughs> Thank you so much. I, Lamont, I know what you're going through. Say amen. <laughs> Sandy, we want to thank you, darling. Amen. For such a scrumptious meal. Amen. Catfish. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Candied yam. Say amen, somebody. Broccoli. Say amen. And then she topped it off with seven up cake. Say amen. <laughs> Thank you again. Say amen. <laughs> amen. God be praised. Choir, thank you so much. Velma and George, Richard, everybody. Say amen. It's only amen. everybody. As you were singing, I felt like saying what the cat said after he'd eaten the canary. The cat said after he'd eaten the canary, Dossman, amen. I can't sing, but it sure is in me. Say amen. <laughs> God be and we who are genuine evangelicals, Curtis, genuine evangelicals, we believe that Jesus is the way, the truth. Somebody help me say the truth. The truth, the truth and the light. That's why how many of us are ready to hear a word from the Lord? Yes, Lord? And today, 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 for just a few moments, I would that you would prayerfully come with me as we focus our minds upon the theme, upon the subject, how to ride in victory. How to ride in victory. And for our scriptural text, I would that you turn your Bible to the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. And we shall begin reading at verse 12, reading down to verse 15. If you have your Bibles or facsimile thereof, please stand with me now. As we turn to John chapter 12, the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Beginning at verse 12, reading down to verse 15. John chapter 12. Beginning at verse 12. Reading down to verse 15. There we find these great words and this classic and relevant story recorded. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found the young ass, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's coat. How to ride in victory. 
You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Please, if you would, repeat that after me. How to ride in victory. Let's say it again. How to ride in victory. Everybody shake somebody's hand real tight. Look them right in the eyes, everybody. And say, neighbor, or oh, neighbor, whatever you do, don't go to sleep on this one. How to ride in victory. Brothers and my sisters, Dr. Williams, preachers, officers, all who had gathered here, choir members, it is quite important, if not absolutely imperative, that we realize that one of the saddest observations that we can make, Curtis, of our modern times today is that so many people are living in defeat. I said one of the saddest, sorriest, if not tragic, observations we can make but the stand of our modern times today deals with the fact that so many people of all ages, races, classes, and colors are living in defeat. Everywhere we look, everywhere we go, people today are living in defeat. All in our communities, all on the street, on the streets, even in our own families, many today are living in defeat. For those who are in bondage to drugs, to opioids, to crack cocaine and heroin and crystal methamphetamine and ecstasy and marijuana, PCP and LSD are living in defeat. Those who are in bondage to pornography are living in defeat. Those who are in bondage to paranoia and fear and insecurity and guilt and inferiority complexes are living in defeat. Those who are in bondage to the occult in bondage to the California psychic, to the palm reader, to the Ouija board, amen, praise be to God, to tarot cards, to the spiritualist, to Madame Sui Sui Fruitcake, amen, are living in defeat. Those who are in bondage to alcoholism, who, who regularly get sloppy drunk off of Chevy's Regal and Cisco and Wild Turkey and Booms Farm and Remy Martin, y'all getting quiet here, and Remy Martin and Grey Goose and Merlo and Jim Bean and Jack Daniels and Johnny Walker Red and Johnny Walker Black and Smirnoffs and Seagrams, Bacardi and Kennedy, tequila with or without the worm, amen. <laughs> are living in defeat. Uh, those, those, those dear sisters who tragically, amen, uh, are sleeping around with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, Hakeem, Rakeem, Jamal, Javon, uh, Tyrese, uh, Trayvon, and Tyrone, amen, are living in defeat. Uh, those brothers, sadly, who are sleeping around with every Brenda, Diane, Suzanne, Shamira, Shaniqua, Latasha, Lanisha, Lakimba, Lamuma, Denene, Dequeque, and Elijah <laughs> are living in defeat. <laughs> Those individuals who are in bondage to lesbianism and homosexuality and bisexuality, flip-flopping both ways, uh, swinging both ways, uh, going AC, DC, AM, FM, he, he, and she, she, and uh, trying to be a waffle and a pancake. <laughs> are living in defeat. I need an amen right there. I said I need an amen right there. So many people in our society today are living in defeat. But you know, brothers and sisters, having said all of this, let the record clearly show that you've come to church on a mighty good Sunday. I said, having said all of this, Brother Clark, let the record clearly show that you've come to church on a mighty good Sunday. For you see, St. Paul Paul, uh, I have some extra good news uh, for you. Uh, for in spite of this dark and dreary and dank, amen, and diabolical and demonic atmosphere uh, where so many today are languishing and crawling in defeat, uh, please realize this day uh, that as a child of God, uh, you've been called to ride in victory. <laughs> Can I get an amen right there? I said, in spite of all of this dark and dreary, amen, and diabolical and depressing uh, demonic atmosphere, uh, where so many today, Poku, uh, are languishing and squandering and, and crawling in defeat, uh, understand this day that as a born again, uh, blood bought, blood washed, uh, love drenched, uh, faith walking, uh, Holy Ghost filled believer, you've been called, uh, you've been empowered to ride in victory. If you believe it, shout amen. 
I said, if you really believe it, shout amen. Uh, yes, you've been called uh, to ride in victory. Uh, rebuke defeat. Uh, rebuke the devil, uh, rebuke depression, uh, rebuke despondency, uh, rebuke the notion uh, that you are not on the winning team. Uh, my brothers and sisters, you've been called, uh, you've been empowered, uh, you've been assigned, uh, you've been charged uh, to ride in victory. Uh, and that's why Paul declares uh, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, uh, but thanks be to God uh, who giveth us the victory uh, through our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, you've been called, uh, you've been empowered, uh, you've been assigned, uh, you've been charged, uh, you've been commissioned uh, to ride in uh, victory. Uh, somebody help me say victory. Point your fingers, make a, make a V with your fingers and say victory. Everybody, come on. I need everybody, come on. Everybody, come on. Some of you have exercised all day, come on. Yes, you've been called to ride in victory. Uh, and that's why Sister Belma, the songwriter couldn't help but to write uh, victory is mine. Uh, victory is mine. Uh, victory today uh, is mine. Uh, I told Satan uh, to get thee behind uh, because victory, uh, victory, uh, victory, uh, victory, uh, victory uh, is mine. Victory is mine. And so my brothers and sisters, when we in the face with this tremendous text that we have before us today, a text that finds Jesus, that tells of Jesus' triumphant and victorious entry into Jerusalem, please realize that this our text is helpfully suggesting several ways in which each and every one of us here today can ride in, Victory. can ride in. Victory. Well, here we go. First of all, the text is suggesting that if you want to ride in victory, you must ride in humility. Secondly, the text is suggesting quiet that if you're going to ride in victory, you must ride in honesty. And then finally, this beautiful text is suggesting that if you're going to ride in victory, you have to ride in holiness. Yes, yes, this beautiful text of ours, Brother Preachers, is marvelously suggesting that if you're going to ride in victory, amen, you've got to ride in humility, you have to ride in honesty, and then you must ride in Holiness. Now concerning our first issue, uh, praise be to God, according to the 15th verse of our text, we are clearly told that when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem, he just did not come riding on a donkey. But the text says that he came riding on the colt, wonder, a man, the offspring, Sheila, of a donkey. Yes, when he came riding into Jerusalem, he just didn't come riding on a donkey. Amen. But he came riding on the colt, the offspring of a donkey. Now, can you imagine, just think about it. Can you imagine the king of kings riding on the coat of a donkey? Can you imagine the, the Lord of lords riding on the coat of a donkey? Can you just imagine, amen, the savior of the world riding on the coat of a donkey? Can you imagine the creator of the cosmos, the universe, and the solar systems riding on the coat of a donkey? For clearly Jesus did not come riding on a stallion. Jesus home did not come, amen, riding on some royal steed. Jesus church did not come riding on the likes of a sea biscuit or secretariat or fern or last year's triple crown winner, Justify. No, no, no. He came riding on the coat of a donkey, uh, which symbolizes uh, humility. Uh, I said it symbolizes uh, humility. Uh, for understand, saints, uh, that in ancient Jewish culture, while the horse symbolized war, the donkey symbolized peace. Uh, yes, uh, therefore, when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem, pastor, on the coat of a donkey, it symbolized that he was the humble king of peace. Uh, oh, St. Paul, don't you see today, uh, parents and young people, uh, that if you're going to ride in victory, uh, you must do as Jesus did. Uh, you must ride in uh, humility. Uh, pure, genuine, uh, self-effacing uh, humility. Uh, if you're 
going to ride, uh, operate, uh, living in victory. Uh, you got to ride in uh, humility. Uh, somebody take these scriptures down. Uh, for Acts, praise be to God. Uh, for Jesus says uh, in Luke 14 and 11, uh, whosoever would exalt himself uh, shall be abased, uh, but he that humbleth himself uh, shall be exalted. Uh, Proverbs 16 and 18 declares that pride goeth before destruction uh, and a haughty spirit before a fall. First Peter 5 verse 5 says uh, that God resisteth the proud, uh, but give it grace uh, to the humble. Uh, don't you see, beloved, uh, if you're going to ride in victory, uh, you must ride in uh, humility. Uh, yes, you must ride, young people, in uh, humility. Uh, well, let me try to break it down even more. This means that you cannot afford uh, to be arrogant. Uh, you cannot afford uh, to be conceited. Uh, you cannot afford uh, to be not narcissistic uh, or egocentric uh, or snotty or snooty uh, with your nose all turned up in the air. Uh, you cannot afford uh, to think that you are God Junior. Uh, my, my, my. Uh, you cannot afford uh, to think that you're all that uh, and a bag of chips, nachos uh, and jalapenos. Uh, you cannot afford uh, to think that you're the best thing uh, since sliced bread, uh, red Kool-Aid, uh, black pepper or hot biscuits uh, you gotta ride in uh, humility yeah, 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 yeah. Right. you gotta ride in humility but then second and second text is suggesting that if you're gonna ride in victory amen you gotta ride watch me now in honesty yes you must ride in honesty you must ride in Honesty. For we're told, we're told in the 13th verse of our text that when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem, the people shouted out, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. That's what the people said. Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord that cometh in the name of the Lord. Watch this. The people said that cometh in the name of the Lord. Now, saints, you need to know that whenever you do anything, amen, in the name of the Lord, uh, you do it in honesty and in truth. Yes, yes, yes. Whenever you do anything, preachers, hear me out now. In the name of the Lord, you do it in honesty and in truth. That's why Jesus declares in John 4 verse 24 that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Whenever you do anything in the name of the Lord, you do it in honesty and in truth. And when you do things in honesty and in truth, you are well on your way to victory. <laughs> Somebody say amen there. I said when you do things in honesty and in truth, you are well on your way to victory. But now church, I want everybody to look at the preacher because I want you to understand this qualification here. Please realize that while dishonest people, I said while dishonest people may be successful in the world, they are never victorious in life. Oh, somebody missed it. Amen. Somebody missed it. I said, while dishonest people may be successful in the world, uh, they are never victorious in life. For example, Al Capone, the 1920s Chicago mobster and murderer. While he may have been successful in the world, uh, he was not victorious in life. Richard Nixon, the lionest president we've ever had in the White House, with the exception of the current one. Come on, somebody. <laughs> While he may have been, amen, successful in the world, uh, he was not victorious in life. Uh, Bernie Madoff, uh, who stole multiple of millions of dollars from naive investors, uh, while he may have been uh, successful in the world, uh, he was not victorious in life. Uh, oh, my brothers and sisters, young people, millennials, all who had gathered here, choir members, uh, amen, if you're going to ride in victory, uh, you must ride in uh, honesty. 
Uh, you must learn how to do things uh, in honesty and in truth. Uh, well, let me specify. Uh, if you want victory in your home, uh, do things in honesty and in truth. Uh, if you want victory on your job, uh, do things in honesty and in truth. Uh, if you want victory uh, in your educational pursuits, uh, do things in honesty and in truth. Uh, you want victory in your marriage. Uh, do things in honesty uh, and in truth. Uh, you want victory with your children uh, and your grandchildren. Uh, you must do things in honesty uh, and in truth. Uh, preachers, you want victory in your ministry. Uh, you must do things in honesty and in truth. Stories told, stories told, stories told, stories told of a man from the city who came to the country and he encountered a little country boy. And he said, excuse me, son, but can you tell me which direction is east? The boy said, no, no. He said, son, can you tell me which direction is west? He said, no. He said, son, can you tell me which direction is north or south? And again, the little boy, Poku, answered in the negative, no. And so out of utter frustration, the man from the city said to that young country boy, son, you're kind of stupid. You don't know anything. Sheila, he said, you must be an idiot, an imbecile, or a moron. But son, you really don't know anything at all. You're real stupid. At which time, the little country boy scratched his ear and he said, sir, you may be right, but I do know I'm not lost. <laughs> That's what he said. I, I do know I'm not lost. <laughs> And I've stopped by to tell somebody today, St. Paul, uh, that when you do things in honesty and in truth, uh, you will never be lost. Uh, can I get a hallelujah there? Give God a hand of praise right here. I said, give the Lord a hand of praise. Uh, you'll never be lost. Well, well, finally, finally, our text is suggesting that if you're going to ride and live and operate in victory, amen, you must ride in holiness. Oh, somebody wake up and smell the Krispy Kreme donut right here. Yes, if you're going to ride in victory, you have to ride in holiness. If you don't mind, raise your hands toward heaven and put it down and say, holiness. Everybody, come on. If you want to be more holy, come on. You'll feel much better. Come on. Holiness. You must ride in holiness. Now, saints, you need to know that the Greek word for the word holiness is hagiasmos. Somebody help me say hagiasmos. And hagiasmos, according to the great Scottish biblical scholar, Dr. William Barclay, essentially means living differently from the world because you have surrendered to Jesus Christ. Yes, hagiasmos, the Greek word for the word holiness. Pastor, it means living differently from the world because you have surrendered to Jesus Christ. And Saint, Saint Paul, dear friends, if you're going to ride in victory, live in victory, operate in victory, you must ride in holiness. You must live differently. Somebody help me say differently. Yes, you must live differently from the world because you have surrendered to Jesus Christ. Take these scriptures down. Take these scriptures down. For Acts chapter 3, verse 14. Acts chapter 3, verse 14 tells us that Jesus was the Holy One. Yes. First Peter, First Peter chapter 1, verse 16 finds the Lord saying, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says uh, without holiness uh, no man shall uh, see the Lord. Uh, oh Mother Kennedy brothers and sisters uh, if you're going to ride in victory uh, you must ride in uh, holiness. Uh, you must live differently uh, from the world uh, because you have uh, surrendered to Jesus Christ. Uh, can I hear amen there? <laughs> I said, can I get an amen right there? Notice, if you please, saints, uh, notice, if you please, uh, all of the terms and phrases uh, and gestures of holiness found in our text for today. Uh, I said, just notice all of the terms and phrases and gestures uh, of holiness found in our beautiful text for today. Uh, for the term Hosanna. Somebody help me say Hosanna. 
Yes, Hosanna, which means, oh, save, or please save now, is a term of holiness. The phrase, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord, is a phrase of holiness holiness. Uh, the gesture that found the people uh, laying down palm branches uh, as Jesus rode into the city wonder. A man was a gesture of uh, holiness. Uh, if you're gonna ride in victory, hear me today, uh, you must ride in holiness. Uh, you must live differently from the world uh, because you have uh, surrendered to Jesus Christ. Uh, well, St. Paul, I'm going a little bit deeper. Uh, just before I I close, uh, please understand uh, that holiness uh, does not mean that you are morally perfect, uh, but it does mean uh, that you are morally accountable. Uh, holiness does not mean uh, that you don't ever fall, uh, but it does mean uh, that you never brag or boast uh, about your fall. Uh, holiness does not mean uh, that you don't ever make mistakes, uh, but it does mean uh, that your mistakes uh, don't make you. Uh, I'm trying to tell you uh, if you're going to ride in victory, uh, you got to ride in holiness. Uh, you got to live differently uh, from the world uh, well I'm ready to close now uh, and the question must be raised uh, what makes us so uh, different uh, yes what makes us so uh, different uh, as believers uh, what makes us so different uh, my brother my sister as a saved person uh, what makes you so different uh, the question has to be raised uh, what makes us so different uh, well saints uh, Saint Paul uh, there can only be one answer to this question uh, and that answer is uh, the blood uh, of Jesus Christ uh, yes the blood uh, of Jesus Christ uh, it makes us different uh, I said the blood uh, the blood of Jesus uh, makes us different uh, everybody shake somebody's hand uh, everybody shake somebody's hand uh, and say my friend uh, the blood of Jesus uh, makes us uh, different. Uh, oh, yes, it does. Uh, if you believe it, shout amen. Uh, the blood uh, of Jesus Christ uh, makes us different. Uh, for in a culture uh, where everything uh, is breaking down, uh, never forget, St. Paul, uh, that the blood still works. I said the blood still works. Anybody believe that today? That the blood still works. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain it flows to the lowest valley on oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power for there's power in the blood anybody believe that there's power in the blood there's power in the blood of the lamb there's power in the blood power in the blood there's wonder working power in the blood I had to ask myself what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is thy flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know nothing 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 but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
St. Paul, we love you so much. And I pray, yes, sir. Pastor, I pray that no one went to sleep today. In fact, I pray that no one goes to sleep on any gospel message, regardless of the vessel. So many today are living in defeat. If you do not have Christ in your life, you're living in defeat. My late great father used to say that if a person doesn't have Christ in their life, they are living in a state of emergency. So many today are living in defeat. Therefore, we as the body of Christ need to be reminded that we've been called, we've been empowered to ride in Come on, I need to hear somebody. Victory. Come on, shout as you believe it. Victory. Victory. That's our calling. And the Lord, through his Holy Spirit, has empowered us to do just that. How, how can I do it in this, in this godless age, brother preacher? Well, it's in the text. Number one, you got to ride in humility. You got to ride in what? Amen. Pastor, somebody got it. Humility. You cannot think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Pastor, I've been trying to preach some 47 years, full-time evangelist, 37 years. I've conducted well over 1,100 revivals. i preached everywhere, 13 different denominations all over the nation. I've never seen so many arrogant Christians. Right, tell the truth, tell the truth. Both in all of my days. We're an arrogant bunch now. Lord have mercy. My good friend, presiding elder of Church of God in Christ, Bishop Charles Blake, says that we need to be real careful. Right. Those of us who have experienced unprecedented, unparalleled prosperity, we got to be real careful uh, prancing and parading and peacocking around here. Talking about our class this, our class that, our class cars, class homes, class clothes, class networking, and class timeshares. Bishop Blake says that when we stand before the Lord in the judgment, he's going to clearly say, class dismissed. It's not about us. It's all about him. Now, I need everybody, do me a favor, I need everybody shaking somebody's hand. Come on, everybody shaking somebody's hand. Look them right in the eye. Everybody shaking somebody's hand. Look them in the eye and say, my friend, I love you in Jesus' name, but you ain't all that. No, we're not. The Bible says that our righteousness is as of filthy rags. Hallelujah. You must ride in honesty. You're going to ride in victory. You got to ride in what? Tell the truth. Don't be like that occupant in the White House. Say amen. Tell the truth. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Certainly, 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 certainly. You remember, you remember uh, the story of Pinocchio? Right. How many of y'all remember Pinocchio? Yeah. Amen. That, that wooden Italian boy who came to life. Every time he would tell a lie, his nose would grow. Why, well, you remember that? Well, every time he'd tell a lie, George, his nose would grow. Nose would grow. Nose would grow. Tell another lie, nose would grow. Well, Pastor, it occurred to me, suppose every time we church folk lied, our noses would grow. You know what? We wouldn't be able to get inside the church. Say amen. 
We be talking about, excuse me, it's just my nose. Come on. You got to ride in honesty. When you find this saying, you're going to ride in victory, you got to ride in hope. Got to ride in what? Holiness. You got to live differently from the world because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We're celebrating today his blood and his body. Our word for today, I pray that you got it. How to ride in victory. Give God a hand of praise for the word of God. Oh, come on, come on. I said for the word of God. For, for the word of God. Come on, come on. If you were blessed by the word today. I said if you were blessed by the word today. Give God, give God, give God a hand. Give God a hand. Pastors asked me to extend the invitation. George Velma, you know. That lovely song by Walter Hawkins, Be Grateful, Be Grateful, Be Grateful. We want every head bowed, every eye closed. Who knows the word? Sonia, you know the word? <laughs> Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This is the period of invitation. My brother, my sister, if you do not have Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, you're living in defeat. But today you can switch reels. You can have your life transformed and changed by saying, yes, Lord Jesus, I want to start living in victory. You can teach me how to be humble. You can teach me how to be honest. You can teach me how to be holy. I need you today. Lord, I know that it wasn't an accident. It was not an accident that you led me here. Perhaps someone invited you, but, but you can say, Lord, I know that it wasn't an accident that you led me here today. He wants you to receive him. He wants you to be grateful enough to take advantage of this yet another chance he has given you to surrender your life to him. Don't be distracted. Get out of your ego. It doesn't matter what you've done, how low you've gone, how long you've been out there, how badly you messed up. Jesus loves you. And he'll meet you right where you are. Now he will not keep you right where you are, but he'll meet you right where you are. You don't need any credit cards. You don't need any references. You don't need any degrees behind your name. You don't need $10 million in your savings account. You can come just as you are. Our heads are up. Our eyes are open. We're all standing now. Sister Sonia in the choir, they're going to sing here. The Bible says that the goodness of God ought to lead you to repentance. Who will be the first to come? Who will be the first to come? Is there one? Is there one today? Is there one today? Is there one today? Is there one today? God bless you. 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 Is there another today? Is there another today? Is there another today? Is there another today? Oh, what a beautiful day it is. For you to get right with the Lord. He's been waiting for you. He's been calling your name. He's been bothering your spirit. Come on, here's another, here's another, here's another, here's another. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, 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 come on. Sing it here. Me. Is there another today? Come on, come on. That's not the way 
it's going, it's going to be. Oh, a little rain. We're waiting for you, we're waiting for you, we're waiting for you. Come on, come on, we're waiting for you, we're waiting for you. We're waiting for you, my brother, my sister, young man, young woman. Good time. The good time oh, 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 someone else, someone else. Is there another? Is there another today? You've been hearing God calling you and the Holy Spirit has been pulling on your heartstrings. Today, get out of yourself and get into Him. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Come on, come on, come on. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Like you. Come on, come on. Is there another hymn? The good time. Everybody. Grateful, grateful. Softer now, softer now. We're getting ready to do something very important. If you're here today, you're saved, you know you're saved, you've been baptized, and right now you're actively involved in your church, raise your right hand. Saved, you know you're saved, you've been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And right now you're actively involved in your church. Be honest now, raise your right hand and just say, I'm saved, I'm saved. and I know I'm saved. I'm saved. Say it again, I'm saved, I'm saved. because one day, I said, yes, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And ever since that day, my soul has been satisfied. Thank God I'm saved. Hallelujah. I'm saved. Now, saints, what I want you to do, if your hand was up, I want you to slip it right back up. Slip it right back, that right hand. I want you to slip it right back up. We're getting ready to do something very important. We're not trying to embarrass anyone, but God knows we're trying to get everyone to Jesus. If your hand is up, what I want you to do right now, I want you to slowly turn to your left. Slowly turn to your left. Find out what side your left is on. Amen. <laughs> turn to your left and make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. Slowly turn to your left. Make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. All right, now slowly turn to your right. Slowly turn to your right. Again, make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. All right? Slowly look in back of you now. Slowly look in back of you. Look in back of you and make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. All right now, slowly look in front of you now. Take a pan panoramic view in front of you. Make a mental note of those persons who are not raising their hands. All right, hands down. Everyone looking at the preacher. St. Paul, if you saw someone who did not raise their hands, you may know them, you may not know them, that's not important. But if you saw someone who did not raise their hands, what I want you to do right now in obedience to God and under the power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to gently go to that person right now. Gently take them by the hand and say, come on my brother, come on my sister, you need Jesus today and I'll walk down the aisles with you. Let's start witnessing right now. If you saw someone, come on, let's start witnessing. Come on, come on, come on, let's start witnessing right now. Now, let's start witnessing right now. Pastor Williams, I've always asked the question, if we Christians can't witness inside the church, then how in the name of John the Baptist are we going to be able to witness 
outside the church. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's start witnessing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Grab hold of somebody's hand. Come on, come on, come on, come on today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Do we have anybody? Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Tomorrow is not promised. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now in the hands of Pastor Williams. Ladies, come join us at the Women's Conference, May 17th and 18th, 2019. Our guest speaker would be Jada Edwards from One Community Church. There is something bigger that God's called you to do. He's called you to reverse realities. He has called you to step into situations where there was bondage and create freedom. He's called you to break generational curses, to bring love where there was abandonment, bring healing where there was abuse. People who are about to be destroyed are now about to be saved. Do I have some heroes, some heroines in this room who are willing to step into hard places, start at home, speak godly wisdom, let God put you in the right position because he can give you influence like you never imagined and you could be the key to reversing realities. Amen? You can register online or in the fellowship hall after church services. Ladies. St. Paul's having their very own women's conference May 17th through the 18th. Our special guest speaker will be Sister Jada Edwards from Dallas, Texas. The conference will also feature Bay Area's gospel recording artist Lena Bird Miles. God will help me rise again. He has a purpose and a plan. So rise up, rise up. Get up, girl, you can make it. Get up, girl, you can take it. He is for you. If you don't want to miss this experience, reserve your seats by signing up in the Fellowship Hall or online. How can I pay for college? I'm glad you asked that question. My name is Gerald Ellis and I'm the chairperson of the St. Paul Baptist Church Scholarship Committee and we are distributing scholarship applications in the Fellowship Hall and they are available on the church website at www.stpaulsac.org. St. Paul is hosting over nine different scholarships and there are a ton of other community scholarships that you can access on the website. So make sure you go there and check it out. tuning in. It's our prayer that you were blessed by today's program. Expressions from St. Paul is listener supported. We would like to offer you the opportunity to partner with us to help us to continue to bring you these inspiring messages. To make a tax deductible donation by check, make your check out to the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Mail it to 3996 14th Avenue, Sacramento, California, 95820. Or to make a secured credit card payment, visit our website at www.stpaulsac.org and click the donations icon. We thank you for your faithful prayers and contributions.